Hello and welcome everybody. This video covers my elusive gunslinger build. If you prefer solving your problems by simply throwing more bullets into it, then I got you covered. In addition, this setup provides you with a vastly improved dodge roll that makes it a lot easier to stay out of trouble. The build also gives you access to a fantastic damage skill and one of the best survivability skills in the game. Cherry on top is an impressive passive health regeneration of around 5 HP per second that is always active and does not occupy a valuable ring slot. The Yeisha footage you see on screen is recorded on Apocalypse difficulty, including two boss fights, and the Narut on Nightmare. You will also see me use two different sidearms, more on that later in the weapon section of the video. As usual, you can find all wiki links to the shown equipment in the video description. The relic we use is a bit elusive, but you can check my comprehensive solo player guide with a step-by-step -step instruction on how to obtain it. Let's kick this off with the archetypes for this build. Gunslinger sits in the primary slot for various reasons. I wanted to use a fully automatic rifle and the additional fire rate and reload speed of the Gunslinger are perfectly suited for this task. The build can become quite the ammunition hog, so the infinite ammunition when using a Gunslinger skill is a must, otherwise Bulletstorm will drain your reserves in no time. The skill has already a pretty short cooldown, which we will further cut down, more on that in the ring section of the video. We have 20% increased reload speed on empty, more ammunition pickups and a relic use also reloads weapons and grants a 15% damage buff for 10 seconds. All great stuff for our weapon setup. The invader as subclass comes with a 30% increased evade window. Now what exactly does this mean? In short, if you suck at dodging you can now suck 30% more and will still get a successful dodge roll. Every dodge provides you with iframes or invulnerability frames during which you cannot be heard. Don't ask me about the exact number of frames Remnant 2 uses, but this skill gives you 30% more of them. More room to mess up and still dodge out of harm's way. The skill of choice is Void Cloak that lets you automatically dodge up to 3 attacks depending on the damage they would inflict. The skill's activation has no global cooldown or animation, so it is instant and can be triggered on the fly, which is a huge life savior in dire situations. It also stays active for 60 seconds. Now the original cooldown is also 60 seconds with 10 points in expertise, but we will bring this down to just below 49 seconds. This is the only archetype skill that will automatically spawn a decoy when triggered, so we don't have to slot the invader in the primary class slot to access this feature. The damage perk is a bit wonky and I wish they would extend the duration by 5 to 10 seconds, but usually you will have it always active when traversing the open world or in boss fights. Overall it was less of a problem than I initially thought. On top we have some short but chunky lifesteal once a decoy is active and reduced stamina costs for dodges. Overall, great buffs to your avoidance mechanics. The traits will further enhance these mechanics by adding nearly 30% more distance covered by your dodge rolls. The fitness trait will take care of this. Don't underestimate the benefit from this trait, especially with all the invaders improvements already in place. For example, in the Kalos shadow boss fight on Apocalypse, you want as much distance after his submerge and resurface attack as possible. This attack is otherwise an instant kill, is super fast and very hard to make out. Two panic rolls will now cover enough ground to avoid the attack and in general this and many other fights profit a lot from quickly dashing away with two or three now vastly improved dodge rolls. The Summoner's class trait Regrowth will add 1.5 HP per second to the Relic's 2 HP per second and both are affected by the Triage trait. So we get a total of around 5 HP per second all the time without blocking any ring slots. This passive health regeneration setup makes your life a lot easier and you can double it with the Relic on Use effect plus getting the 15% increased damage for 10 seconds from the Gunslinger's Relic perk. The other traits are the usual suspects. 
Vigor, Expertise, Fortify and Bark Skin. We don't have enough points to spec into the Lifesteal trade, but this is more than compensated by the passive heal setup. Even after the patch, I would go with Bark Skin and Fortify over other options and not completely focus on Evasion aka the typical Glass Cannon setup. While you are maybe not super chunky, you can take one or two normal hits on Apocalypse while still having the normal dodge roll. I found this to be my sweet spot between high evasion and the ability to survive a mistake or two. But if you are more the daring type, then you could ignore Fortify and Bark Skin and put those points somewhere else. Moving on to weapons. I wanted a fully automatic rifle with no overheat mechanic which basically left me with a trusty AR-47 as my only choice. The Pulse Rifle would be my first alternative if you don't like the AR. Although being a 3 round burst rifle and not a single shot weapon, it does benefit from bullet storm and becomes fully automatic, which makes it during that skill an absolute monster. But all around, my goal was a full auto setup and the AR gives me exactly that with a decent initial crit chance. The handgun I use on Apocalypse is still the Enigma, which is even after the nerf the best group clearing gun in my opinion. This setup also buffs the Enigma's damage by quite a bit. On Nightmare I prefer the MP60 and the Witchfire mod that hits hard, has two charges and refills quickly. Now for mutators and the other weapon mods. The build gives you the total freedom of using either acid rounds, hotshot or overflow in your long gun. All have their benefits and after a lot of testing I can assure you the differences are rather minor. The only mod I would personally not use is overflow because it further increases your fire rate which will then drain your ammunition reserves even faster. Hotshot increases base damage by 20% and has the highest ticking dot. Acid round grants 15% increased crit chance and has the hidden mechanic to increase damage against targets suffering from the corrosion debuff by 10%. With acid rounds the setup has a 45% crit chance and we have an improved critical damage by 50%. More on that in the ring and relic section. So acid round takes the cake here for me but we do not buff a specific elemental damage type so you can swap it out if you like. For mutators I use Deadly Calm in my long gun, 20% increased damage and plus 10% crit chance. With the Enigma I prefer Bandit to offset the now smaller magazine and Twisting Wounds for the MP60. This will increase the MP60's damage by 20% and another 20% from our amulet. And as you can see from the footage on Nightmare, this thing just melts standard mobs in no time. Here's the amulet and the rings to make it all happen. I use the Chains of Amplification for 20% increased damage. The Enigma profits from it, the MP60 with the Mutator and we can use the Long Guns weapon mod usually back on back, so again taking full advantage of it. It also lets you mix elemental damage debuffs to your liking, including bleed. I did test the element specific amulets, but without debuff stacking and prolonged debuffs they do more or less the same damage as chains of amplification, but lock you into one element. Energized neck coil is also an interesting alternative, but more situational for group clearing. Standard rings in this setup are probability cord for 30% increased crit damage for the up to 45% crit chance we have. Stone of Malevolence to be able to use acid rounds or hotshot back on back. They did not touch this in the latest patch and I have seen no dev statement lately where they announced to decrease its potential, so I assume for the moment it is fine, especially when considering how they allow infinite damage multiplier stacking for all the hunter gunslinger standard setups. Burden of the Stargazer brings down our cooldowns for Bulletstorm to a meager 39 seconds and Void Cloak to 48.8 seconds. So use Bulletstorm often for insane burst damage and to preserve ammunition. Void Cloak gets a lot more sexy with the shortened cooldown. The 15% health penalty on skill use are really no concern for me with the high passive health regeneration. The last ring slot is used depending on the situation. Alumni ring for the Enigma setup and the Stone of Balance for the MP60 setup. 
but you could really just stick to either one, the overall differences are very minor. In boss fights I switched to Xenia's Malice for 30% increased weak spot damage. Most boss fights present you with a prominent weak spot to hit, so you get the most out of it. Relic setup is the usual Tranquil Heart, again watch my guide on how to obtain it if you do not already own it. For fragments I go with plus 20% increased critical damage as soon as I have the mythic variant for it and 10% increased critical chance. In the open world I use 10% increased range damage and for bosses with prominent weak spots I would change it to 15% more weak spot damage which I totally forgot in the corruptor boss fight on apocalypse and would have been especially useful there. Armor is whatever hits the 50 mark and keeping the normal dodge roll, in this case Leto mark. 2 helmet, night stalker garb, bruiser boots and survivor gloves. There you go, the build hits hard, you can clear standard mobs on any difficulty easily even without using the weapon mods and bullet storm in combination with acid rounds just melts most targets. The additional survivability from the invader makes your life a lot easier and the void cloak skill is really really strong. One time I messed up the timing in the corruptor fight and stood in the lane where he placed his beam and simply walked through it after popping void cloak. I want to make a more unfancy build, focus on gun damage and I'm quite happy how it turned out. If you have additional suggestions or improvements to the build, please feel free to add a comment. For now, this is all about Remnant 2, stay tuned for more upcoming build videos. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.